67.8, page number two, tax at the 7699, the 7699, bottom line, 4301. 4301, and then finally, of course, we could do the same for both of them. Why, why is he married to such a young lady? That's weird. Something's happening here. We're going <laughs> to increase. She loves him. That's why. Okay, let's go back on over and say this is going to be... Now we have four of them. She loves that old blind guy. Okay, so then I'm going to double click on this and say this is going to be plus another 1,500. That gets us to the 33,700. So now we're at the 66.3. 66.3, page number two is at the 7519. So uh, 7519 and bottom line 4481 and the 4481. Okay, I won't go into the married filing separately because we're going kind of long here, but uh, the, 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 you know, the married filing separately, similar idea and same with the qualified surviving spouse, remembering that if someone, you can look at the tables to check those things out, but the married filing separately is similar to the to like the single in terms that you're going to go back to the standard deduction and then add add the amounts from there i won't get into that here and then the qualifying surviving spouse remember that that only applies in, possibly in the year after the death meaning if two people are married and then the person dies say in 2023 then they wouldn't possibly revert back to surviving spouse or single or head of household in 2023 they'd still be married but in the following year possibly if they have a qualifying dependent then they might be able to hold on to the to the qualifying status of qualifying surviving spouse instead of bouncing back to single or head of household in which case you get the benefits of of basically being on the marital side uh, of 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 things and that will have an impact on the standard deduction in a fairly predictable way at this point i hope so uh, that is that.